All right, welcome back to this week's Walk and Talk. And boy, oh boy, are we in big trouble. There is so much craziness going on this week that it's unbelievable. So what I'm gonna to do today as well is I'm changing the format of the Walk and Talk very slightly. So rather than focusing on the things I focus on during the week, what I'm gonna do is bring back a lot more of the controversy, a lot more of the weird and wonderful stories as well. So please drop a comment below after you've watched the video if you prefer these sort of stories on a Friday or if you watch the video on a weekend. All right, with that said then, let's get into the big breaking news right now. This one is a finance uh, topic, but it is the big one. So let's get into it. 10 Asian countries have just announced de-dollarization at their meeting. At their? At their meeting. So this is the big news of today. This is, this is actually a huge one. They agreed to reduce the use of US dollars for trade. So this is Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, and Laos. And they claim the reason for this is because they are concerned over US sanctions and what happened with Russia's 300 billion US dollars that were confiscated. And if you actually read the full report, we won't go into it all on this video, but the main thing is they said they're concerned that because a number of those countries are aligned with BRICS or want to join BRICS or they do a lot of trade with China, Russia, etc., that they are concerned that the US might sanction them next. So they need to move away for their own safety and security. Now, again, it's interesting because what did I say right at the start? These sanctions would not only backfire, but they also wouldn't reduce the war in Ukraine. That wouldn't happen either. And that the sanctions would backfire on us in the West, but also a lot of these other countries that use the US dollar for trade will begin to de-dollarize because they will be fearful of what's happened with Russia and what's happening. And remember, it's not just what's happening with Russia. The US, the EU, the West in general is putting a lot of pressure right now onto other nations to honor sanctions. Well, they use the word honor here, but I don't think they've looked that up in the dictionary in terms of honoring the sanctions because these other countries didn't agree to honor those sanctions in the first place. So really it's trying to put pressure onto countries to do something that they may not want to do, regardless of what you feel about the morality of the situation. You can't use pressure and try to make other countries do something that they don't want to do or may harm their countries. Because remember, a number of those countries are still developing. They are developing nations. So telling them they can't use Russian energy or they can't use Russian resources or they can't sell to Russia and things like that, that is very difficult to put that onto these countries. But I think the weirdest and most wacky story of the week is the one that keeps coming out of all these media companies. We on, I think is the worst for it. Talking about the next pandemic. Oh yes, the next one is on the way and it's just around the corner if you believe these media outlets, which I don't. I think they talk absolute nonsense, but this is what they have to say. They keep repeating that COVID came from bats and was transmitted to raccoon dogs and from raccoon dogs it was just a free-for-all pigs why you know street dogs all these other you know weird stuff that they eat in these wet markets they're still going on with this story even though it's been disproved now uh, but but anyway listen to this clip then of what they just said scientists are already talking about where the next pandemic could start from bats and the threat of a looming pandemic let me break it down for you. No, please don't break it down for us. Save us the pain. Now they keep, again, these different outlets keep saying different things. Oh, the next one's gonna start in Brazil. Brazil is likely to be the place of origin of a future pandemic. Then they say, oh no, it's gonna start in India. Oh, this, you know, this one's because of bats. They are evolving due to climate change. 
No, they are not evolving. Oh my, I mean, this is, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh yeah, evolution is taking place in uh, a few months within bats or a couple of years within bats. They really are catering to the lowest common denominator at the moment with this news. Some people will believe absolutely anything that they are told. And talking of crazy stuff and, be and believing anything that people are told, Lidl, the supermarket chain, has just launched mealworm or insect burgers. No, this is not a joke. And I've got to read out the statements here because they are absurd. Here we go. Customers are demanding food that is more sustainable and in line with reducing climate change. We are happy to be delivering upon that promise. What promise? <laughs> Seriously, what promise? I, I don't see any promise there. All I see is more propaganda and it gets worse. The product's packaging warns that it may cause allergic reactions in customers that have allergies to, get ready for this, mollusks, dust mites, or crustaceans. Yeah, I mean, I don't know anyone who is allergic to dust mites, do you? I think that's pretty much every single person I know is allergic to dust mites. So, I mean, this is, this is just a crazy. Honestly, I don't think a lot of these companies are learning from the uh, boycott that just took place. <laughs> Beer boycott, it looks like Miller Lite is about to get a boycott as well at the moment. I don't think these companies are, are realizing that their profits are dropping <laughs> because of this wokeism that is going around. They just think it's, a, I don't know, some sort of a coincidence, I suppose. But as of 2022, the European Commission has approved three insects for sale and consumption as food. Crickets, mealworms, and locusts. These can be sold in frozen, dried, and powder forms. An EU spokesperson said, here we go, here we go. Due to the decrease in livestock-derived protein, alternative sustainable protein sources have been identified. Yeah, I bet they have. Other ideas include lab-grown meat. Well, we know who Gosh, this is, this is funny. So we've got talking about lab-grown meat, we've got cricket farms and insect farms, and then we've got all the CO2 stuff. I wonder who the biggest investor of all of these things are. I, I, his name is just slipping me at the moment. I'm sure it will come back to me. Oh yeah, he was the guy that said that planting more trees won't help to reduce carbon. No, 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 everything we've known for all of these years since we were kids was a lie. It was a uh, climate, what do they call it? Science, science deniers, or I don't know, radical scientists that spread, you know, spread all these rumors about trees. These things don't trap carbon, apparently. No, I don't know what they trap. Who knows, hey, in this day and age. But he says that his, um, carbon trapping technology. They're basically these giant fans that they suck carbon out of the air and put them into the, the ground. He said that is the solution because trees will take too long and they don't really help that much anyway. Such nonsense. Oh yes, trees, they don't help with, uh, with carbon. Can you guess who I'm talking about now? But talking about all this stuff, over to international politics then. This one made me laugh this morning. It was one of the last articles I picked up to add into the walk and talk. Western politicians demands to India that they must stop buying the Russian energy that the West sanctioned because this is allowing Russia to bypass sanctions. That was a mouthful. One Indian official has responded to this demand with, <laughs> Mind your own business. <laughs> but a more political answer came shortly afterwards, which said India is acting under global rules and is perfectly within its rights to buy both the energy and even resell it into the European Union. So they've just launched this thing as well. It's the, is it the Federal Reserve or the Treasury? They've just launched this new thing. They've hired two of the top economists in the USA to do a measure 
of US sanctions against Russia to see how well they are performing because the public is having doubts. It was something like 76% of the public are having doubts about whether the sanctions are working. But don't worry because Biden and Rishi Sunak are about to announce new sanctions. This time, these ones will work. Yeah, okay, of course they will. Because the first set of sanctions were supposed to have worked as well. And they didn't work. It, you know, this stuff is, uh, is, is just crazy. And I don't know if you've seen all this in the media over the last two weeks, but the UK is just on the warpath against China. I mean, it is really ramping up. The rhetoric is unbelievable. Liz Truss, the prime minister for all of two or three weeks before she quit because she couldn't handle it, which I don't really buy. She implemented a load of draconian measures and then she disappeared because then no one can take the fall for it except someone who disappeared. Well, she's back anyway and she's on all these speaking circuits. Very nice earner actually, minimum of £100,000 per speech. Thank you very much for an hour um, of a talk. And she's talking yet again about China. China is the biggest threat to democracy in the world. China is the biggest military threat to all of our Western values. And if we don't put a stop to them, that they're going to you know, do this and they're going to do that and we're not going to have freedom and everything else. Now, there are many in the West who say we don't want another Cold War. But we have to be clear that this is not a choice that we are in a position to make because China has already embarked on a self-reliance drive. The only choice we have is do we appease and accommodate that strategy or do we take action now? Well, China called Truss's visit a dangerous political stunt. Well, the current UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak declared China as the biggest threat to the UK as well, while vowing to close all 30 of the Chinese institutes in the UK. The irony is, yes, China is extremely restrictive and, you know, they have facial tracking and social credit scores and, you know, they're very, very restrictive on, on what they actually do. But so is the West. <laughs> you look at what the West has been doing over the last few years. It is insane. And I'm not saying that the West is the worst because they're not. There's others that are a lot, a lot worse. But look at the Restrict Act and look at all these other measures that are coming in, where now they're talking about and proposing that in the future, people won't even be able to create their own um, like social media. If you're an influencer, like I guess I'm classed as an influencer with over 400,000 subscribers on YouTube, then you've got to be somehow approved to actually create content in the future because it might be you know harmful or dangerous or you know, misinformation and whatever else they're talking about. And the other thing they keep mentioning is how China's helping to fuel the war in Ukraine. This again is a complete lie. It just, you know, these sort of things just annoy me. They do bother me when we start getting into all this, all these lies around what's going on in that region. We know the facts already, they are facts, but then people start throwing in all of this other nonsense. And by the way, I've never been to China in my life. I don't have any sort of support, I guess you can say, for China. I have no affiliation with them. You know, it doesn't really bother me what happens with China. I'm just reporting on it from an economics and a numerical point of view that they are going to be the dominant country, the dominant nation in the future, the whole of the BRICS nations will be, which I think will be led predominantly by China. It's just facts. That's what I see. We're seeing a change of power and it's occurring right now because what has China got? They've got all the resources and they have the resources of the African continent as well. They've been doing deals there since I was young and I was traveling through Africa. I was always see Chinese engineers and geologists and, and whatever else, um, you know, so they've been doing this for a long time, not just there, but South America, a lot of other nations, a lot of nations in their region as well. They've got, so they've got the resources, they've got the minerals and everything else. They've got the people working in the factories. They've got all the production. They've got the technology. They've got the transport. How many ports do they own around the world? 
So they're pretty much set up, ready to go, and their GDP is strong, their inflation is low, their interest rates are reasonable. You compare that, and again, I'm not, I'm not anti-West, I'm not, you know, people say, you're a traitor to your own uh, race, to your own country, when you talk about these things. Yeah, okay, some people are just, they got their head in the sand, and they don't want to know the facts. The reason I share these facts, and I talk about it, is because I want to be prepared, and I want you to be prepared. I was talking a little while ago about my bug out plan, that if you know the West ever goes completely dystopian, I will be off, I'll be going elsewhere. I've already got that plan in place, and let me tell you that it won't be a Western nation that I plan to go to. And no, it's not Russia, it's not China, it's not India or anything like that either. But my point is that the BRICS nations, I think, are going to be the strongest in the future and that's just what i see you know i don't intend to be offensive to anyone gosh so many people are so delicate now people are like little flowers when you say things they get offended and upset actually i'll tell you a, a wild story my wife was in a video conference just yesterday and she said something about oh yeah he said so and so anyway she gets a private message from a lady of the, the who was the I don't know, she was probably the admin of the conference or whatever, the video conference. And she was like, oh, just to let you know, just to give you a warning, he, uh, he, it isn't he, it's they, them, that's his identity, his pronouns. So if you don't use his pronoun, you need to use his pronouns, you know, you'll just get a warning this time because you weren't aware. But if it happens again, further action will be required. My wife was like, well, I won't tell you what she said. <laughs> We, we, don't, uh, we don't use that language on this, uh, on this channel here, but uh, she'll never be part of that group ever again. Not only being forced to use pronouns, but being warned and being told off like a little schoolgirl for something that she wasn't even aware of and isn't behind anyway. But the G7 summit has now begun, and uh, what a farce that is. I want to read out to you the statement here. We believe the biggest threat to our society at present is China, and we must deal with or curb the rise of China at all costs. One idiot went on to say humanity is at stake. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Oh, and a few people asked me what I was talking about with the missiles being destroyed yesterday when I did that video. So there was a Patriot missile system, a US missile system in Ukraine, and it was reportedly destroyed. And the US has actually confirmed that it was hit, but they're saying it was damaged. And you know, basically this was a one, over $1 billion piece of equipment that was hit, which apparently it's not supposed to be able to be hit. So that was a weird one. And do you remember the what I said about, oh, what's that missile called? Shadow Storm, the Storm Shadow, Storm Shadow missiles, that's it. I said, the UK is sending these missiles to Ukraine now for defense, but you know what happens. It's always starts as things like this, and then they're gonna be used for attack. Now, it doesn't bother me what they're used for, whether they're used for defense, whether they're used for attack, but the point is that the whole premise was that they would only be used for defense. But now what's happening is they're being used to attack into Russia. Look, it's a war. Everything's fair game at the moment. But it's just the point that they say one thing and then they change it, which I knew is, is what was going to happen. And it will be the same with all the other stuff as well soon. $25 billion worth of weapons have gone from the US to Ukraine already. But they can't spare $25 for people who haven't got enough food to eat. I mean, it's just an insane, it's the military industrial complex, basically. That's, that's basically what's, what this is all about. It's not about saving humanity and you know supporting different countries and things like that. If that were the case, th there would be support for all these other countries around the world that have been at war or civil war for a, a long time, and there isn't. So this is just an opportunity to test loads more weapons in that region, sell more weapons. Look at the share prices of these defense companies as well. But anyway, I could talk about this all day and people don't like it when I talk about this topic. So uh, I'll get off it now. Montana has been the first US state to ban TikTok from devices. This ban comes into effect on the 1st of January. Now, this is what 
was really weird about it. They said that TikTok restricts freedom of speech and freedom of the press. What? That's actually the opposite. They said it's the First Amendment, it breaches the First Amendment. That's actually the opposite of what TikTok is. Again, I'm not a fan of TikTok and I definitely think there's spying and all sorts going on with the app. I'm uh, no doubt about that whatsoever. But do I think it restricts people's freedom of speech? No, I think it actually helps people to get out free speech. And that's what they don't like, you see, the media. They don't want to have people showing live feeds of what's actually happening and making their own videos. Now, some people talk absolute nonsense, as I've said before, and they'll say anything. They make up all sorts of weird stories, but there's got to be a fine balance between restrictum of freedoms and speech and just an outright ban. I'm actually amazed we haven't seen a single person so far on this walk, considering it is now peak season and all the tourists are here. But uh, one thing I wanted to tell you as well, someone asked me before, how much did the Queen's funeral cost and the King's coronation? I've got those figures, oh sorry, how much for each taxpayer. So there's 160 million for the funeral, over 100 million for the coronation. So that's 260 million pounds, meaning if you divide that by the number of UK taxpayers, it cost each taxpayer 10 pounds each. So there we go. Now I wanna end with two crazy, crazy stories. You know I love the controversy at the end. We used to do these and then people were just crying too much about it. Oh, that was offensive to me and whatever else. So we're gonna bring it back and uh, not worry too much about people getting upset. So number one then, actually this isn't that controversial, it's just bad. Outcry as Australian police taser a 95 year old lady, not once, but twice, so she's expected to die. The police officers claim that the lady who has dementia and the care staff actually informed the police that she was always you know, having issues like this, but she was holding a knife at the time and was emotionally unstable. So she was on her walker, which I don't know, how else to describe it? It's like a Zimmer frame or, you know, what people use to help them walk around. And the police told her to stay where she was and not to move. But apparently she continued to move forward on this Zimmer frame walker. So they tasered her twice. Okay, the last one is the most wild. Are you ready for this? The fugitive Sam Brinton was finally detained last night after a six month manhunt. Ooh, hold on, you can't use that term. He identifies as they, them. So I'm not sure if, uh, if uh, they can even use that in the media. He might be able to use that to get off. So if you're watching, Sam, that might help you avoid jail time because it's up to 15 years jail time for the crime he committed. The report states that Brinton was taken into custody on Wednesday night at his home in Rockville, MD, in Washington, D.C., Wow, that was some manhunt. Those detectives should get a medal. He was found at home. <laughs> Six month manhunt. Oh my gosh, that's funny. So yeah, it was just under $7,000 worth of theft that he committed. And it was some weird stuff as well. Um, weird stuff. Actually, I only talked about all the theft a couple of weeks ago in my video in the US, it's now gone over $100 billion per year. That's theft from retailers in the USA. Unbelievable. But when you have weak laws against crime like that, you have more crime. It's just obvious, guys. It is common sense. But what a wonderful walk it was today. Lovely weather. And the reason I'm dressed like a lumberjack is because I have some trees to take down on my property. They are dead trees before anyone starts saying, oh, I hope they're not alive and you're killing trees. No, no, they're dead. They are long since dead and dangerous. I don't want them coming down on the house or the road. So they are coming down very shortly. One quick announcement is that my finance course is going to be going up in price very shortly, but I am creating another course for you all. That is exciting. I've been working on it for a while and I'll probably take some time off in the summer to complete the course. And that course is all gonna be around the psychology of money. 
So that is going to be an interesting course. I think you're going to really like it. But apart from that, if you want to get the current course, so the finance and economics stock market course, link is below in the description. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, being a subscriber here. And again, drop a comment below if you preferred this style of video to the normal strictly finance and economics walk on a Friday. All right, take care. God bless. I'll see you on Tuesday now.